I am Michael. I love to recycle. I do it with my bicycle. I do it from my tricycle. I do it in the summertime, or even when there's an icicle. I place it all in a special bin. Plastic bottles, glass, and paper, again and again. Keep them together, rinsed and cleaned, but no plastic bags, please, or you'll damage the machines. So join me and your neighbors. Recycling's no chore. Check out the new website to find out some more. Welcome to Community Spotlight. I'm your host, Leah Hasledge. Today's topic is on Sustainable Cleveland 2019. Our guest today is the Chief of the Office of Sustainability for the City of Cleveland, Matt Gray. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Start by telling us what exactly is Sustainable Cleveland 2019 and how it got started. Yeah, so it's a 10-year initiative. It got started in 2009, um, so this is our 10th year, which is really exciting. Um, so it got started by Mayor Jackson uh, in 2009, and the whole idea uh, was to really create the sustainable economy. Um, you can think back to 2009 and what the state of the city and, and the country was, yeah. and we were really in the depths of uh, the Great Recession. And clearly we were putting out a lot of fires, uh, making sure people were safe, but at the same time the mayor uh, really wanted to think through what our economy and what our, our basically quality of life looks like going forward. Um, so really thinking longer term um, as well. So Sustainable Cleveland 2019 was born um, and it's, we've been working 10 years ever since. The whole model is engaging the community. Um, so we know as a city we can't do this alone. So if we're talking you know, about energy or water or transportation, we, we, we need residents, we need businesses, we need other government agencies all to step up. Um, so a, I'd say a, a hallmark of the initiative has been our summits. So we had our first annual summit in 2009, 500 people coming together for three days to really co-create what sustainability means uh, for the region, not just really Cleveland, but the whole region. Um, and that was really impactful. And on that day, the mayor said, this is so important, we need to have one of these every year for 10 years. So we just finished our 10th annual summit uh, last fall. And what do the summits entail? So the summits entail uh, getting everyone together from different sectors, from residents, um, to retirees, to nonprofit leaders, uh, uh, corporate sector, um, and everywhere in between. Um, the idea is get everyone in a room, all these different perspectives on what it means to be uh, sustainable, and come up with common solutions. So this is two days out of the year, and then the other 363, uh, we work to kind of implement a lot of the ideas that come out of the summit. Now each year with Sustainable Cleveland 2019, you have a different focus, and we'll get to 2019s in a second, but tell us about some of the areas that have been a focus throughout these years. Certainly, so uh, we basically have nine different focus areas, and before I launch in those, I want to say that the common thread, and when we think about sustainability, it's like, what is that? Um, we, I like to think of it as uh, either the three P's or the three E's. So the three P's are people, planet, and profit. So we work on initiatives, policies, projects that um, are good for the people, um, all people, really with equity at the core of the planet, um, and then profit for companies. And then the three E's are equity. So again, making sure everyone benefits the environment and the economy. So everything I talk about and everything we something. prioritize, it's always going back to those three and does it hit all three buckets, you know? So in, uh, Basically, in the 2010 summit, our second summit, um, some residents came up with the idea of, you know, this is such a big topic, why not we break it down in different celebration topics each year to focus on? Um, so we did that. And uh, so 2011 was on energy efficiency. So in our homes, how do we weatherize our homes so people are more comfortable? Our businesses, how do we save money by going to things like LED lights, right? Or um, to fix our air conditioning systems and heating systems to make them more efficient. Which is a win-win for the environment and for your pocketbook. Which is one reason we started with energy efficiency. We call it the low-hanging fruit of sustainability because let's say energy efficiency didn't help solve climate change. We would still want to do it because it's good for our businesses' pocketbook, our own personal pocketbook. Right. Um, 
And then speaking of low-hanging fruit, more literally, 2012 was uh, local food, so we focused on local food. Again, in the area where so many residents um, lead in Cleveland have led for, honestly, decades. And we are considered a national leader in the local food movement. So we really wanted to expand that work. Um, uh, then we moved on to clean energy um, and advanced energy, so things like solar energy, wind energy, including offshore wind, which is a big one here. Yeah. Uh, zero waste is a big one. I think everyone knows that world. Um, you know, how do we recycle better? How do we compost as a community? Even just with transportation, like carpooling, is a part of that too. Right. right? Yeah. So it's all connected with the waste as well. Um, clean water, which I'll talk about more later. Uh, sustainable transportation. So when we think about transportation, um, we look at it from this lens of a street and to say, is that street safe to walk on, bike on, take public transit um, from, from a perspective of an eight-year-old and an 80-year-old? Oh, that's great. Right, so it's not just made for the guy in spandex who likes to bike every day and, you know, be dangerous. Uh, it's really for <laughs> everyone. How do we make these streets for everyone? Because um, even if you don't realize it, you're utilizing that at some point. Right. Yeah. So we call it complete and green streets. You know, how is it good for everyone who's using the street? And so that's really important for us. And then vibrant green space was another one. So a lot on trees. How to re regrow our tree canopy, which is a big one. Last year was on vital neighborhoods. So bringing all of those topics I just talked about at the neighborhood level. And we have so much leadership in all our different neighborhoods on sustainability. Mm -hmm. And then this year is the year of people. So bringing it all back to... The mayor's focus, which was how is this benefiting people's quality of life? Yeah, that's, yeah. so Year of People, it's the big 10-year anniversary. Tell us about what exactly it means to be the Year of People and what's in store for that. Yeah, so, um, you know, a little bit back to the history, I'd say, of environmentalism and sustainability is initially back in the 60s, 70s, I mean, even the 80s, it was about protecting the environment. And I think that's where a lot of the uh, action was and advocacy. Let's, let, let's protect this space outside of where people are and mm -hmm. live in cities. Let's protect it to keep it um, sort of pure, right, and untrammeled land. So this is a lot of like national parks and parks, which is important stuff. But as we moved into, um, you know, the last couple of decades, it's focused on, there's actually a lot of benefits for people with all the work that I was talking about. And for the mayor, that's especially important. Um, so this year, we're bringing all these topics to bear on, you know, ensuring everything we do is really focused on people's quality of life and everyone in the city. So we had our kickoff a couple of weeks ago. We had about 30 organizations who are all supporting people in sustainability um, out there doing what they do, yeah. which is connecting with people and helping them um, in their work at home in their community. Uh, we're going to have a lot of events throughout the year. Um, our, the biggest one is on around the 50th anniversary of the river burning, um, which is June 22nd. Everyone save the date. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Um, but then there's a lot of other events. So uh, on sustainablecleveland.org, there's tons of events, just a couple examples. Um, our Vital Neighborhoods Working Group every year puts on a potluck in the park, which is a great That's event. It's a great event. You know, everyone just brings their own dish, and you meet new people and um, share local food. Another one that's really exciting this year is Common Ground. Um, it's led by the Cleveland Foundation. It'll be June 30th. Uh, and the idea is there, anyone can host a conversation. So they're gonna have over 100 people, organizations, hosting conversations on the 30th, it's a Saturday, around the environment. So how the environment's important to them, what it's meant to them, um, what it is going forward they wanna focus on. Uh, especially in their neighborhoods. That's a pretty hot topic right now because we're seeing obviously a lot in the news about how mm -hmm. scientists are saying that, you know, with pollution, everything, everything's speeding up. It's getting mm -hmm. actually kind of worse. And right. then we need to do something now. Yeah, uh, you're exactly right. Um, I mean, it's, it's honestly, it is, it is scary mm -hmm. um, in many ways. You know, the latest projections on climate change uh, specifically is that if we don't take, you know, a lot of serious action in reducing our uh, carbon pollution in the next 11 years by 2030. I mean, we're, there's a good chance we will be on a planet that is essentially unrecognizable from what we know. Yeah. You know, our climate in Cleveland is going to feel more like southern Missouri, western Tennessee in our lifetime, mm -hmm. um, which is really hard to imagine. Um, so a lot of this work is connected to all the work on climate change. We just um, updated our climate action plan as a city last year, um, which has gotten some national attention. Yeah. Because we really want to focus on, yes, we need to reduce pollution, 
but how do we address climate and ensure everyone benefits along the way? So as we transition to solar energy, how do we make sure everyone benefits from solar, not just the wealthier individuals or those businesses that can afford it yeah. type of thing? How do we make it more affordable? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And you can find that climate action plan on your website. Yep, sustainablecleveland.org. So we talked about transportation a little bit earlier. What are some ways that the Office of Sustainability is working towards making transportation mm. a lot less of a pollutant? What are some ways we can work on this? Right. So, um, so nationally, actually, in the last couple of years, transportation became the number one source of carbon pollution, even now more than um, what we use to, for electricity, natural gas. You know, to power our homes and businesses. Mm -hmm. So transportation has become even more important. Um, and transportation is critical because it does affect things like asthma and air quality. Mm -hmm. um, so when we think about transportation, the number one, um, I guess, metric or indicator is what we call mode shift. So the number of people who drive alone to work. So currently in Cleveland, about 70% of people drive alone to work. And I'm guilty, I do it sometimes, yeah, right? And we yeah, have to. you have to sometimes. Um, so, but our idea is how do we make the infrastructure easier? How do we educate to get that number down and increase the numbers on carpooling, um, biking, walking to work, uh, public transportation, working from home sometimes. Who doesn't like to work from home? <laughs> uh, so those are the kind of things that all of the actions are trying to raise those other ones up. Yeah. Um, so just one example is on, on biking. You may have noticed um, Cleveland, we have added about 100 miles of bike infrastructure, like bike lanes, in the last five years. So the idea is that that makes it safer for people to ride in the street and gets more people biking, which is happening. Um, so you know that's a good example of we've done a lot, but we have a lot more to do. Um, and going back to what I was talking about earlier, that 8 to 80 vision of how you see a street, mm -hmm. We want more protected bike infrastructure now, so actually physical barriers where we can between yeah. um, bicyclists and cars to make it even safer from everyone. For both, yeah. yeah. So those are the kind of things with transportation we're thinking a lot on. Um, and in education, so groups like Bike Cleveland, uh, there's a group called um, uh, Black Girls Do Bike, mm -hmm. uh, Ohio City Bicycle Co-op, many other, Department of Aging, actually in the city, yeah. does great work on education. Um, with biking and getting people who don't traditionally bike or feel comfortable doing it out there on the street and getting more comfortable. There's a lot, um, but transportation is a critical one for us to solve. And accessibility, I think, is one of the big things. Like the UH bikes are a great addition to the city, making yeah. it easier for people that maybe don't have a bike. They can just right. rent it and get around town. And there's drop-offs. So those red bikes you see around town, yeah. Um, and, we're, and this summer we do a plan to expand that bike share system so more people have access in more neighborhoods to yeah. the bike sharing. Does this also include things like segways and scooters and all, and all those various elements yep. to transportation? Yeah, segways is out there. Um, Carl, of Carl, <laughs> who runs a segway locally. Uh, and uh, in scooters, we are looking right now um, to examine best practice policies for different cities and how they address scooters in the city. And yeah. like everything with transportation, it's, it's balancing demands. Um, with safety and public safety. So it's true with scooters, it's true with bikes, it's true with cars, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's a lot of the focus right now is figuring out as we expand the, the bike share system and, and possibly scooters as well, yeah. how do we make that safe? Yeah. Well, we're gonna take a quick break, but we'll return with more of Sustainable Cleveland 2019 here on Community Spotlight, so stay tuned. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Welcome back to Community Spotlight. I'm your host, Leah Hasledge. Today's spotlight is on Sustainable Cleveland 2019. With us is the Chief of the Office of Sustainability for the City of Cleveland, Matt Gray. Welcome back. Thank you. So we were just talked about transportation, but another way that um, there's pollutants in the air that we need to work on is consuming energy. So talk to us about how the office is working on that. Yeah, so uh, consuming energy in our homes. We all do it at work. Um, so, you know, a big source of pollution is um, really the fossil fuels we burn to power 
our homes and businesses. Um, and in Ohio still, most of that is from coal uh, and natural gas increasingly, um, fossil fuels. And of course, burning those things helps, is the, one of the main contributors to climate change, which is this global challenge. Um, so a lot of our work is trying to figure out um, how do we use less energy? So energy conservation, energy efficiency, uh, but also how do whatever we do use, how can that be more renewable, you know, greener sources of energy? Um, so again, solar and wind and things like that. So, um, you know, Cleveland's interesting in that we have a very unique asset here. We have uh, a big lake. <laughs> a great lake. A great lake, yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, and we have a really unique opportunity and a lot of people have been working on for a while is to put offshore wind turbines in the lake. Mm -hmm. um, pretty far out there, about six or seven miles, uh, a pilot project to see can we generate a lot of our electricity not from coal, but from wind. Um, and the wind blows really strong out on the lake. Um, there, you know, there's less issues some people have with having wind turbines near them. Mm -hmm. um, so there is great potential for offshore wind. So we're hoping, and we're making a lot of progress in the next few years, we actually have, we'll, we will have electricity being generated by turbines out in the lake, as an example. Another one, just quick, is, um, you know, things, uh, we think about like landfills, old landfills, oh, yeah. uh, brownfields, vacant land. Using that when it's not appropriate for development um, for solar. So we've actually had now three big solar arrays um, uh, out there in the community that are generating a lot of electricity. And then we're also for residents. So um, there's this countywide, it's called a solar co-op program. There's mm -hmm. been a few rounds. Um, the next one I think will be coming up here in 2019. And the idea is any resident um, can join this cooperative. Um, last one had about 200 people. And this is to get solar on your home. And it's cool because by working together with all these other residents, one, you learn a lot about solar, yeah. which is really fascinating. Uh, but then you also can bring down the price of getting it. So by everyone kind of bulk purchasing, right, you can bring down the cost for everyone. Um, so there's going to be another one. Uh, the county helps lead this. Uh, oh, great. So there's a lot of stuff going on with renewable energy. Yeah. Something else that people can join. Um, we were once called the Forest City, and it's still mm -hmm. really important to us as a community. People can get involved with something called the Cleveland Tree Plan. Tell us about mm. this. Yeah, right. We were called the Forest City. Um, you know, when Moses Cleveland arrived here on our banks, I don't know what year, 17, 17 something, 89 or something, <laughs> um, what he saw was, you know, completely forested land. And it was like that for much of you know, the history of Cleveland. Um, and then even, I think, around World War II, about 40 to 50 percent of our land still had trees on it in the city of Cleveland. Um, since then, uh, for a variety of reasons, we've, I think we've lost about half of our canopy since World War II. So we're now down to about 19% tree canopy. So if you're looking down from space on a, you know, with full foliage, about 19% of that will be trees. Um, so there's a, the great thing is there's wide recognition now across the community. We have over 30 partners as part of this Cleveland Tree Coalition, groups like Western Reserve Land Conservancy, Holden Arboretum, people may be familiar with, Metro Parks, the Sewer District, uh, many others, all really committed to growing this canopy back. Um, so this Cleveland Tree Plan was launched a few years ago with that goal, um, to really see trees as a um, integral piece of infrastructure, not this nice thing to have. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, also for the city, and we're increasingly doing so, um, putting more resources into maintaining those trees properly, which we know is a priority for a lot of residents. So we've trimmed a lot more trees in 18 than we did in 17, and we're going to keep uh, doing that trend. Um, and when we think about trees, I just like to say, like, a simple street tree can do so much. And I think we lose that sometimes. Um, People forget it provides oxygen. <laughs> provides oxygen. I provides mean, oxygen. We need that. Literally live. physical health. Like, it, more trees around makes us breathe easier, yeah. um, which is so critical. Mental health. And there's a lot of studies show that being around green space yeah. um, is great for mental health. Um, the Metro Health Campus that's being built right now, they're a huge green space. A lot of it because of the connection between health and trees. Yeah. Um, property values, it's, a lot of studies show that property values increase when you have trees. Um, Provide shade in the, in the hot summers. Right, when it's hot summers for especially our most vulnerable residents, mm -hmm. um, our aging population, children, mm -hmm. um, it's great for those high heat days. 
uh, it's great for water retention on flooding. It yeah, helps yeah. reduce flooding. Um, I can go on. I'm just, so just when you see a tree, you know, you can kind of take it for granted, but they do so much for us. Yeah. So we want to grow more of them. Yeah. How, how can people get involved to do that? Because you can't just plant a tree, I don't think, in your yard. You need to go through some steps, correct? Yeah, so there's different areas. So for the city and you know, on the tree lawn, um, I learned that actually only the city of Cleveland or Northeast Ohio calls a tree lawn a tree lawn, oh. which is really bizarre. I didn't know so that. if you're in anywhere else in the country and you say tree lawn, so it's like they pop won't and soda. know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so the city has control over tree lawns, um, but you know other areas on your private land, we launched an initiative last year with the coalition mm -hmm. to easily uh, get a free tree for your um, for your private property. And that sold out real quick because <laughs> it was free. So we're hoping to bring that back this year so anyone can get a, a free tree. Um, and then there's other great programs. Uh, Western Reserve Land Conservancy and Holden have a tree steward workshop. So any resident can go and become a tree steward. Uh, you can go out there and learn about trees, how to maintain them. And then that comes to bear you know, as we're maintaining trees in our community. Okay. So there's a lot of great ways to get involved. Um, so I would just Google you know, Cleveland Tree Coalition, and you can see some really cool opportunities. So you kind of mentioned it earlier, you gave out the date, but this year is not just the 10 year anniversary of Sustainable mm. Cleveland 2019, it is the 50th anniversary of the Cuyahoga River catching on fire, <laughs> which besides the nickname Mistake on the Lake, uh, it did lead to some good things with like the EPA and, mm -hmm. and such. Uh, tell us how we're gonna be celebrating mm which sounds weird to say that, but 50 right. years <laughs> of the Cuyahoga. And it will be a celebration, uh, much more than that. Um, so yeah, June 22nd, 1969 uh, was the last time, let's hope truly the last time the river catches on fire. I think we'll be okay. I think so. Um, so that happened then. It was actually caught fire 13 times total, all the way back oh. to the mid 1800s. And many rivers caught fire back, you know, as we industrialize as a country. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, Cleveland got known for this because on that day, that specific fire, which wasn't honestly a big deal locally, it, it happened before, uh, but because of a lot of the environmental uh, advocacy that was happening through the 60s, um, it got in Time Magazine, it was a widely read issue of Time, and it kind of created this national outrage um, that our rivers are burning. Um, so because of that, because of people like uh, Mayor Stokes at the time who took that um, and ran with it, he did a lot of work locally. He went to Capitol Hill and said, we need to fix this problem. Yeah. Uh, and then many other local advocates at the time, you know, a year after that, the um, EPA got created. And there's many ways connected to, again, the river burning. And then two years after that, the Clean Water Act uh, got created in 1972. And that is still the main legislation we use now that really protects our water for all of us. So something good came from the bad. Something great came from the bad. Um, one thing, one kind of uh, marketing thing we're thinking about is this idea of like, um, you're welcome, America. Like, you know, <laughs> Cleveland took one for the team. It's true. It's true. <laughs> you know, our action helped to lead to really clean water, not just cleaner water here, but yeah. throughout the whole country. So we see this opportunity with the 50th anniversary to really show all the progress we've made as a, as a really region, but also point to the current challenges with water. You know, back then the issue was what we call point source pollution. It's, you know, factories, um, you know, manufacturers dumping chemicals, fossil fuels into the river. Mm -hmm. Now that's not as much the issue because it's regulated. Um, what is more the issue is what's called non-point source. So runoff from farms and all those pesticides getting in the rivers. Um, it's all the stuff that we do and gets in our streets and gets in the sewers. Mm -hmm. um, when there is a combined sewer overflow, when there's too much rain, that gets in our lake. Um, so a lot of the idea is pointing to things like that, um, algae blooms, plastic pollution, the impact of climate change on water. Yeah, because it's probably causing more droughts. Yeah, more droughts throughout the country. Some areas is causing, in Cleveland, more rain and heavier yeah. rain, which yeah. is crazy. So there it's, it's shown we have um, heavier rain events now because of climate, which again impacts water quality. So this is a big opportunity. Um, so the year, uh, if you go to Cuyahoga50.org, there's already 50 events we're basically broadcasting um, that are gonna be taking place throughout the year. Um, so they're already starting throughout 2019. And again, amazing partners throughout the community, all, pretty much all the arts and culture institutions, 
from the Natural History Museum, the Museum of Art, Cleveland History Center. History has a whole back in time 1969 thing I saw. Which is fun, yeah. Yeah. So all these amazing events to kind of connect the water. Uh, but the big weekend will be really that June 19th to the 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to get a lot of people down by the water those days. Um, so it would be a big opportunity. So save the date, everyone. We want to see you here. I um, mean, really celebrating what Cleveland has shown and what we've been able to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you think people should know about the Office of Sustainability and Sustainable Cleveland 2019? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's our job to, I guess, help you and your uh, sustainability journey. You know, any resident, any business. Um, so reach out to us, you know, sustainablecleveland.org. We're also on the city site. So any question really, you know, you have on how to get engaged. Um, I think there's a lot of resources there, but if you can't find it, let us know. Um, you know, there, there are events going on literally every week on different topics. So I think no matter what your passion is, um, what you're interested in, there's something for you. So we really want people to connect with us. Even start small. Oh yeah. The Everything makes a thing. difference. Yeah. How can we get more information? Yeah. So sustainablecleveland.org um, is, is the hub for us. Um, so I'd say start there. Yeah, and all the social platforms and yeah, we're on Chicago Facebook, 50. Uh, Twitter, um, just you know, Google Sustainable Cleveland and, and you'll find us. Thank you so much, Chief, for being here with us today. I know I've learned a lot, and I'm sure you have too. And thank you for tuning in to Community Spotlight, only here on TV20. Of course, check out our website, tv20cleveland.com, to get this information and more. I'm Leah Haslidge. Until next time.